Welcome to lecture 9 on the topic of the phloem. This lecture is separated into two parts and this is the first part. This lecture is part of the subject plant physiology which is a component of the Bachelor of Agriculture and Technology, a degree that is offered by both Melbourne Polytechnic and La Trobe University. My name is Dr Nikki Cooley. As you will be aware at this stage, we are learning about plant physiology by taking a virtual journey through the plant. We are starting at the roots and working our way through the plant. We have entered the leaves, we have learnt about photosynthesis, transpiration, and now we are learning about how carbohydrates and other compounds are distributed through the plant in the structure called the phloem. This lecture is separated into two parts. In the first part we are going to learn about phloem function and phloem structure. Please watch the following video on solute transport. Please make notes on the main concepts of this video and insert into your lecture notes here. For plants, the survival on land poses serious challenges. They need to acquire and retain water. As plants increase in size, leaves and roots increasingly separated from one another. Thus systems evolve for long distance transport of products of assimilates and absorption. The xylem transports water and minerals from the roots to the aerial proportions of the plant while the phloem has a different function. It transports products of photosynthesis from mature leaves to areas of growth and storage, including the roots. Phloem also transmits signals between sources and sinks and redistributes water and various compounds. There are two transport pathways, the phloem and the xylem, and then they extend throughout the plant body. The phloem is generally found in the outer side of both the primary and secondary vascular tissues. The figure on the side illustrates both xylem and phloem structure. Cells of the phloem are called the sieve elements. These include the sieve tube elements in the angiosperms and the sieve cells of the geosperms. In addition, the phloem tissue contains companion cells and parenchyma cells. These store and release food molecules. In some cases, phloem tissue contains fibres and scleroids. They protect and strengthen the tissue. And lassifiers, which are latex-containing cells. The small veins of leaves and the primary vascular bundles of stems are often surrounded by bundle sheath cells, as can be, can be seen in the illustration on the slide, figure 10.1 from their recommended text. One or more cell layers are involved in C4 photosynthesis. Mature sieve elements are unique among living cells. <coughs> they lose their nuclei and toneoplasts, vacuole membrane. Their microfilaments and microtubules, Golgi and ribosomes, are also generally absent. The plasma membrane is retained in addition to modified mitochondria, plastids and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Different to tracheary elements of the xylem, which lack in the plasma membrane, they have ligified secondary cell walls and are dead at maturity. The figure on the slide illustrates the structure of a mature sieve tube element. I will draw your attention to the sieve plates and how they look, containing sieve plate pores and lateral sieve areas. Also, in part B of this figure, you will see sieve tube elements along with companion cells. Sieve elements have characteristic sieve areas in their cell walls where pores interconnect the connecting cells. Sieve plates have larger pores and are found on the end of walls of the sieve tube elements where they are joined together to form a sieve tube. Sieve plate pores are open channels allowing transport between cells. 
sieve element sap is rich in sugars and other molecules, representing an energy investment by the plant. Therefore, loss of sap due to damage must be prevented. Short-term sealing mechanisms, or sap proteins, slime. And there are long-term mechanisms to prevent the loss of this material. Closing sieve plate pores with uh, cell cowlows. Cowlows de deposition is induced in rice plants, attacked by flow and feeding insects, such as a brown plant hopper, or aphid. This occurs in both resistant and susceptible rice plants. However, in susceptible rice plants, feeding by insects also activates genes for the cowlose hydrolyzing enzyme. This unplugs the pores and allows continuous feeding and results in decreased sucrose and starch levels in the leaf. Each sieve element is associated with one or more companion cells Division of a single mother cell forms a sieve tube element and the companion cells. The function in the transport of photosynthates from producing cells in mature cells into the sieve tube elements in the minor veins of the leaf. They also take over some of the critical metabolic fu functions that are reduced or lost in the sieve tube cells. For example, they supply ATP the energy compound the plant uses. These companion cells come in at least three types around the minor veins. The first type, the original companion cell. This is with a cell wall with a smooth inner surface. The second type are called transfer cells. They develop finger-like ingrowths of the cell wall primary on the walls that face away from the sieve element. They greatly increase the surface area of the plasma membrane. They increase the potential for solute transfer, few plasto plasdomata, and they are suited to aplasmic transport. The third type is the inter intermediary cells. They have numerous plasmodesmata, connections to bundle sheath cells, also have numerous small vacuoles poorly developed by thylakoids. These are well suited to symplastic transport of sugars from mesophyll to sieve cells. The image on the slide shows three visual representations of companion cells. Translocation is the term move, uh, used for the movement of minerals and substances in the phloem. Translocation is not defined by gravity. Rather, it moves from areas of supply, or what we refer to as sources, to areas of metabolized or stored compounds called sinks. Sources include exporting organs, mature leaves that can produce photosynthetic substances in excess of their own needs. A storage organ exporting its stored sugars is also called a source. For example, the storage root of wild beet is a sink during the growing season. Then during the second season it becomes a source, remobilizing sugars to produce a new shoot. Sinks include any non-photosynthetic organ and organs that do not produce enough photosynthates. Sink tissues include roots, tubers, developing fruits and immature leaves. The overall pattern of transport is more complex than simply source to sink movement. It depends also on the proximity, development, vascular connections and modification of translocational pathways. Certain sources supply specific sinks. Please watch the following video on flow and source sink relationships. This will illustrate a visualization of the process that we are going to describe in the lecture today. Water is the most abundant substance in the phloem. The phloem also contains carbohydrates, amino acids, hormones, some inorganic ions, RNA ases, and proteins, and some secondary compounds involved in defense and protection. 
Carbohydrates are the most significant, with sucrose concentrations ranging from 0.3 to 0.9 molar. The table on the screen, table 10.1, gives a composition of phloem sap from bean plants. It is commonly accepted that reducing sugars such as sucrose, mannose and fructose are not translocated in the phloem, possibly too reactive in this form. Non-reducing sugars are commonly translocated. Also the sugar alcohols, mannitol and sorbitol. The figure on the screen shows the structure of some of these compounds. It is quite challenging to tap the phloem sap due to the high turgor pressure and wound reactions which seal off damaged elements. Aphids have evolved uh, methods such as the style using a stylet as a natural syringe where they are able to both overcome the protective mechanism and access the contents of the phloem. Other solutes in the phloem include nitrogen which is in the form of amino acids, glutamate and aspartate. Plant hormones which include, include auxin, the family of gibberellins, cytokinins and abscabic acid or ABA. Low levels of proteins, mostly related to stress and defence mechanisms. There are low levels of RNA, mostly in the form of messenger RNA, which are small regula regulatory RNA compounds. Some inorganic solutes can be found, such as potassium, magnesium, phosphate and chloride. Nitrogen, calcium, sulfur and iron immobile in the phloem. A model called the pressure flow model has been developed to explain the phloem translocation. The model poses that translocation occurs as a flow of solution, that is, the mass flow over the bulk flow, and it is driven by pressure gradient between the source and the th sink. Diffusion is too slow, i.e. if translocation velocities average one meter an hour, the rate of diffusion would be one meter per 332 years, far too long. Press, the pre pressure flow model was proposed in the 1930s. Flow and loading is the movement of photosynthates into the sieve elements. Flow and unloading is the movement of photosynthates from the sieve elements to the sink cells. Under this model, three different mechanisms exist to generate high concentrations of sugars in the sieve elements to the source. 1. Photosynthetic meta metabolism in the mesophyll cells. 2. Conversion of photosimulates to transport sugars in intermediate cells. This is called polymer trapping. And 3. Active membrane transport. The slide shows a visual representation of the pressure flow model. You will note the source cell, the companion cell, and the flow and sieve elements. You can follow the route that a sugar will take from the source cell, illustrated here by as sucrose in red spheres, and how it is actively loaded into the flow and sieve elements. You will see the partial pressures involved in this process. If you then follow the solute down to its final destination, the sink, the sugars are unloaded and, and are then transported into the sink cell where they can be used or stored. The pressure flow model states if no cross walls were present, i.e. if the pathway was a single compartment, the different pressures at source and sink would equilibrate. Sieve plates present a, significant, a sequence of resistances to the, mo the moving flow and sap. This resistance results in the generation and maintenance of the presence pressure gradients between source and sink. The second component to note is that mass flow permits the flow from a source organ with a lower water potential to a sink organ with a higher water potential. Is this a violation of thermodynamics? No, as it is mass flow, not osmosis, which is driven by the water potential gradient. Please use the recommended textbook Tazen Zyger 2010 Plant Physiology 5th edition. 
to read the section on overall plant structure in chapter 1, pages 2 to 4. Chapter 5 on the section of root systems differ in the form but are based on common structures, page 101 and 102. Make notes on these readings and insert them into your lecture notes here. So that brings us to the end of the lecture on the phloem. In summary, to review what we have learnt, you will see that the phloem has an intricate mechanism. In this mechanism, the movement or translocation pathway has been created, and that is driven by the transport of solutes and water into the source sieve elements and out of the sink sieve elements. We have learnt about the passive, pressure-driven, long-distance transport that occurs in the phloem. This also enables loading and unloading. These mechanisms are responsible for setting up the pressure gradient in plants. This is the end of part one.